Good morning, everybody. We're here in Wisconsin. Mostyn, Wisconsin. We're ready for our day. Let's get let's get at her. Gotten everything ready to go. Take my sweater off. It's pretty warm out here, actually. I can figure out how to do this. <laughs> I'm having some trouble here getting my sweater off and the zipper stuck. Yeah, I'm gonna put you guys down again. All right. Ah. All right, so let's rock and roll. It'll be a full day. We won't quite get to our destination, but we do have a delivery appointment tomorrow, midday, just sometime between 8 a.m. and 2 p.m. Whenever I get there. I'll probably get there around noon, I think. That's what the schedule's looking like here. You have seven hours and 40 minutes of remaining drive time. Well then, let's make use of it. Let's go. So we were getting phenomenal fuel economy yesterday with this load. It's not a parachute for once. So we're actually able to just slip through the air. But I know that as soon as we get out of Minnesota into North Dakota onto the open prairies that uh, we're gonna be faced with wind. We don't know which direction the wind will be coming from yet, but we know there will be wind, tremendous wind. Are you guys ready for this? Are you ready for this? We're about to get ourselves back onto the interstate. Actual real interstate, not like the Trans-Canada we got for an interstate. Four lane divided, overpasses, no intersections, no bridges, oh, pardon me, only bridges. You know what I mean, you know what I mean, whatever. Messed it, messed it up there. There we go. There we go, come on, let's drag ourselves up there. So we're sitting at a gross weight of about 75,500 pounds. So uh, I hope people will stay out of my way today because I don't want anyone to get hurt. And we're rolling through here pretty heavy. when they have the on-ramp on the incline like this towards the freeway. It always works better when they have the, the decline onto the freeway. It helps you speed up. I'm going as fast as I can right now and I'm only entering the freeway at like 40 miles an hour. Gather some more speed yet. Continue on this road for 38 kilometers. 45 miles an hour by the time I hit the freeway. Speed limit 70 miles an hour here. And that's the best I can do. That was pedal to the metal. So I always like when they design the like these freeways are awesome. I was just saying that, right? But the, just from a trucker's humble opinion, it's always better when you design the interchanges where the the road going over the freeway goes over the freeway and that the freeway doesn't go over the road. Does that make sense? The road going over the freeway. I didn't word that right. <laughs> but it always works good if the un if the if the interstate goes under the underpass every time. That way when you merge onto the interstate, you got the decline down onto the freeway. Right? That way by the time I hit the actual interstate, I'm doing the speed limit and I'm not holding up traffic or impeding traffic or slowing anyone down, but that's just a Cherokee's humble opinion. Doesn't mean much, I know. What would I know, right? I'm still thankful for these nice interstates here. They they uh, they know how to build roads here, I'll tell you that. You know, and they're right next door too. Like, you would think that the people up where I'm from would, you know, just go take a visit. Visit North Dakota, look at their highways. Same climate, same region, same terrain, same everything. Same temperatures in the wintertime. Yet they have immaculate, beautiful highways and roads. Two lane, four lane, everything. You cross the border to us and we're like, they're crumbling, falling apart. You know, you build them six months later. They look like they belong in a third world country. You may as well have just left them dirt and gravel. Karen's getting all mad at me because I went off course. We're here in St. Cloud, Minnesota. I'm gonna grab some fuel here. 
We are in quite a rush to get back now because they do want me there first thing in the morning. So to be there first thing in the morning means that we need to book it today. In 100 meters, turn left on Clearwater Road. Oh, that white Volvo turning in there just because an accident because he didn't use his signal. And this guy almost, come on people. So I need to get a pump here that also has DEF. I don't think all of the pumps here have DEF. Gotta look at the sign. Maybe they put DEF at every pump already? Oh, this is a crowded place. Crowded place. Pretty sure only a couple of them have it. Hopefully it's not one where someone left their truck in the pumps. And Every island. Every island. Aha, there's DEF at this one. We will go to this one then. I choose you. But there's no DEF on that far one there. Even that guy pulled forward, but he left his trailer in the pumps. So it's kind of pointless pulling forward to let someone else fuel when you leave your trailer in the pumps, bud. Come on. <laughs> Come on. What's up, citizens of the apocalypse? I'm looking for the rest of my footage from today. It disappeared again. The virus ate it up, I guess. Sorry. Uh, well, where did we end off there? We ended off in uh, at the pumps there. In we're still in the U.S., weren't we? Yeah, Flying J. Oh, that was in St. Cloud, Minnesota. Oh, I lost a lot of footage. Okay, well, we uh, we made it back into Canada. They let us back in. Uh, we delivered that steel pipe. The, we delivered that American steel to a, a very nice receiver in Manitoba. And we went home, and that'll be tomorrow's video. Uh, we did some doomsday prepping. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Uh, that's tomorrow's video. But I guess today is going to be cut short. I don't know what happened. Look at this. This was Wednesday. Okay, yesterday was Tuesday. Here's all my footage. Oh, no, no, no. This is... Uh, oh, wait. That's this next week. Wednesday. Thursday. Okay, so here's this footage here. That's definitely not the right footage. Sunday. See, I keep all of my stuff organized here so I don't lose it. And here it is. And then here we're at home already. We're going to barbecue and stuff. Tomorrow will be a short video too. It was just short while I was at home. Uh, Britt and I were pretty distracted this weekend. Uh, uh, my videos are about a week behind. Are you snoring? You know how distracting that is, man? How distracting that is. You know, you, you, you'd be able to breathe a little easier if you wouldn't crank your neck like that. Yeah, you having fun? You know, you can move. It's a free country. You don't have to lay like that. <laughs> okay. Uh... So my videos are about a week behind. Uh, they're a little off this week because this weekend was kind of like a unique type of weekend. Uh, this whole virus thing sort of blew up in North America here. Uh, it's not really here yet, but the governments are really locking down and preparing for it. So that's probably what I'm going to be talking about a lot in this next week. So just foreshadowing. I know that's all you're hearing anywhere else. The, the media won't stop talking about the virus. The, the governments won't stop talking about the virus. Your family won't stop talking about the virus. Well, now Trucker Josh is going to have to talk about it a little bit this week too. But I'm going to keep you updated on my experience as I go through this because I'm, I'm thinking with my job uh, traveling around all of North America, or at least my part of North America, my region, I may have a unique experience on it. I am sort of self-quarantined already, so I don't have to, I'm, I'm pretty low risk at getting it. And if I were to get it, I'd be very low risk to spread it. I could just park the truck and just stay in my truck then until it passes, until I, I get cleared. Like I, I'm not too worried about that. But, you know, we rely heavily on trade with the United States. 
I personally rely on on being able to trade goods with the United States. That is where my food on my table comes from. From them buying our stuff and us buying their stuff back. And if that were to get shut down, it would devastate us personally. So we'll see what happens. Uh, but tune in this week. I'll keep you updated on what all happens. Just remember, uh, it's a little bit behind. There's a beautiful Pete pulling up here right now. Sorry, squirrel. Squirrel. That is beautiful. Oh. Beautiful. Sorry. Easily distracted. Pretty lights. Yeah, tune into my vlogs uh, if you haven't already subscribe everyone's welcome uh glad to have you here love to have you as part of the show we make a video pretty much every day and uh, this week may be interesting as i document my journey through this coronavirus journey maybe it'll turn into something huge maybe it'll just blow over we don't know but either way we got to take it serious this is a serious uh very contagious virus that's coming in uh, we'll talk about it in the future a little bit more. Thanks for tuning in today. I'm sorry I lost the footage again. That's my bad. I fully am responsible because I am the producer and the editor and the talent, as they would say, talent. The, the, I'm, I'm a one-man show here. I mean, Weasel helps, but this is uh, pretty much what he does when it comes down to it, when it's time to work. You hear that? Come on, snore for the camera. I'm putting the microphone right at your face. Oh yeah, now you won't snore, eh? Yeah? <laughs> hey, good boy. Good boy. I'm gonna take him out right away, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Uh, it's a vlog from home tomorrow. So, uh, we'll see you then. I hope you're safe, I hope you're healthy. Take care, let me know down below that you're healthy. And, uh, you know, if you do contract this virus, uh, if you feel like it, don't feel like you have to. But if you want to share your story down below, I'm sure others would uh, love to learn what to expect and what it's like and uh, what your story is. But don't feel like you have to. If it's a personal thing, that's okay. See you tomorrow, everybody.